and welcome back to another video and this video is going to be uh, part of the vintage sewing machine series today i'm so excited we're going to be well starting i don't think we're going to get it finished today because i've got to get the kids in a couple of hours and no way can i sew a dress up in a couple of hours anyway we're going to be attempting to make this dress here i don't want to get too close to the camera um so this is the vogue v8811 um it is a 1940s design it says it on the bottom there original 1940s design it's not an original 1940s pattern it's a reproduction obviously but however i'm pretty sure the instructions are the same as what they released in the 1940s because they are very vague if you <laughs> if you've never sewn anything before i wouldn't even attempt anything like this this is the first time i'm sewing uh, one of like the big pattern company sewing patterns I normally stick to indie companies because they go so much in depth on the, their instructions and they'll do um, like video tutorials and stuff you don't get none of that with this um, another thing I've noticed is that it kind of when you're reading through the instructions it kind of presumes that you know what you're doing on certain parts so if you're unfamiliar with something, I don't know, um, an ease stitch, say, it does tell you in the glossary what an ease stitch is, but it's very vague. So like a prick stitch, I've never heard of a prick stitch, whatever that is, I have no idea. I'm guessing I'm going to have to do it at some point. Um, I might have to stop recording and look on YouTube because YouTube is like a Google for me. <laughs> <laughs> a web search um yeah to teach me how to do a prick stitch whatever that is now with this pattern there is a uh, side seam fastening so you can do um you can pop in press studs they're called press studs poppers like little sewing ones um you can use them or you can put in a zipper so i've chosen a zipper now I had to pop out this morning and get an invisible zipper. I thought I had one and I didn't. I've never sewn with one before. I've got zippers but not an invisible one. Um, so yeah, I had to pop out this morning and go and grab a zipper. Where have I put that? It's just over here. So I've got a nice long zipper here. This one is a 16 inch or 41 centimetre zipper. Now, from what I read of the pattern, what I remember, it didn't say what length zipper to use. So there was one available that was longer than this. I think it was 22 inch, but I thought that was a bit too long and I thought it's, it's a bit of a waste. So I've gone for that one. I'm hoping that it's long enough. I think it will be, because that looks quite a big, uh, long zipper. Um, it might say it on the, I'm looking at the instructions. It might actually say it on here. Uh, oh, 12 inch zipper. So it does say it, it's just me being me and not reading things properly. And the sun's come out now, it's going to blind me. So yeah, 12 inch zipper. So we've got more than enough. The next one down from this, I believe, I didn't see a 12 inch, I saw a 9 inch. And I almost got the 9 inch, so I'm glad I got the, the, uh, the 16 inch. So yes, we need to get cracking with this. The instructions for these kind of patterns are on a massive piece of paper. And I like <laughs> I like a bit of a, a book or something you can print off and fold it into a book yourself. This is a pain for me. Or if it's digital, sorry my nose is running. If it's digital, I'll just keep it on the computer and then on my laptop and then flick through it on my laptop. So this is a bit of a pain, but it's just how the comes in it, I suppose. I think, as I say, I don't know because I've not got another, I don't think I've got another physical pattern like from one of the big pattern companies this is the first what i do appreciate with this pattern is the gives you pattern layouts i'm trying to spin it round it gives you a pattern layout here for when you're cutting your fabric um and obviously we're doing b so this is b and a is down here so i get really confused when i've got directional fabric which way which way is best to put them so that they don't end up upside down or and because the skirt is cut on um more of a bias of the fabric 
I I just couldn't get I couldn't work that out in my head which way is the best to, to lay it so I just copied this layout um, I probably could have done it a little bit better for so I didn't use up so much fabric but to be honest I've still got loads of fabric left over um, I ordered plenty for this dress so it worked out fine and I managed to cut them all out and I'll put some footage of me cutting them all out in um, it's a bit of a pain as well because I have to do that on the floor in the living room because it's the biggest room in the house so when I'm cutting out big patterns like this it's just easy to do it on the floor but then it gives me a bad back originally I was going to trace out the pattern I didn't want to cut the original pattern you're all going to gasp at me now um, yeah I was going to trace it out then I realised I didn't have any tracing paper left but I had got some like art roll that you put on an easel like kids have and I thought well I can use my tracing wheel I think I've left it downstairs somewhere yeah I can use my tracing wheel and I'll trace over the the pattern onto this art paper on the bottom and then I'll join it all up um, it didn't really work I could just about see it and oh, it was taking too long and then I had to transfer all the there's a lot of markings in this and I had to transfer all them and I just thought you know what sod it um, I will like it I know I'll like this dress as long as it fits me fine I will like it so I don't think I'll be selling it on or anything and it's fine I've put a lot of people cut into the original pattern so but what I did do I cut into the uh, biggest size and then folded it down to my size and I've cut a sorry I have made I've cut the fabric in a size 14 now I'm not a UK 14 these measurements might be um, in American maybe I'm not too sure because on the packet it does say uh, US $30 Canadian $33 so it might be US sizes I don't know I don't know what US sizes are but for my uh, bust waist and hip my measurements are 36 28 and 38 exactly and that fit perfectly into the size 14 so fingers crossed it's gonna fit me fingers crossed there is an option to make a belt a matching belt with this but I'm not gonna bother um, just because I didn't want to faff and fart around with the belt making it and I didn't want to buy all the buckle thing and I've got little skinny belts that I can wear if I want to with it but to be honest I don't think I'm gonna and I'm not gonna bother with the pocket either because I don't really like a pocket there um, unless it's like that kind of style t-shirt but I didn't like the thought of putting a pocket on I don't think it really goes I know it's on there and it's on the picture but I'm not gonna bother I have got shoulder pads to put in which I'm going to do, I believe you do that at the end. The zippers goes in at the end. Um, it does say on the instructions that you it wants you to finish the hem with a binding. Again, I'm not going to do that. I'll probably just turn it up, do a double hem and then stitch it down. I'm not going to bother doing the binding. I did want to try and stick to the pattern as closely as I can. Um, but there's some ways they tell you to do things and I'm like why, why is this is this a vintage way to do it um, like when you attach the skirt to the bodice it wants you to like butt it up and lap it over like that and then stitch it down so that's the bodice and that's the skirt and it tells you to kind of put them up against each other and then sew it down whereas obviously nowadays when you do a bodice and a, and a skirt and attach them together you put them right sides together sew it round and then flip it the right way out and it's done and finish off the hem so the hem sorry the seam so I think that's what I'm going to do I don't know I don't know we'll we'll see what we see what it's looking like when we come to it um obviously all this is just I'm trying to like work it all out in my head before we sew it because you know I get things wrong and I end up having to rip out stitches and start again and so I have tried to read this over and over and over again and I am a bit more nervous about this because I've never made this kind of pattern before. I've made dresses before, but <clears throat> I've not followed a Vogue pattern or any other of the big companies. So I am a bit nervous about this and there's a few there's a few steps that I'm a bit worried about. But I'm sure I'll be fine and I'll wing it if anything. I can wing it. So 
let's put this away so I'm going to stick that over there I've cut out all my pattern pieces already like I've mentioned now in the pattern they're just I've just shoved them on the bed and there's a great big lorry trying to reverse out of my skinny road now and it's going to be noisy so as you know we're going to be sewing this on Big Bertha that's the nickname I've decided to give her because she's an absolute beast of a machine now Bertha hasn't got uh, any seam guides on the uh, plate of the of the machine so but it has got and I worked this out I think I might have mentioned it in my last video uh, this is a seam guide so you just you obviously have to use a measure use a ruler and measure it see the distance and you just put that there's a hole in the base plate here and you just put that and then you move it across to whatever seam allowance you need so I'm going to set that up in a minute and I believe this pattern is 5 8 seam allowance I've seen it somewhere it might be on the instructions I'm sure it's 5 8 seam allowance so I'm going to set that up at 5 8 seam allowance now I bought the invisible zip and I got arm and I thought oh do I need an in invisible foot for that but but you don't have to I don't think you have to but I have actually got one with this machine so I'm happy about that never used it before never done an invisible sit before so that might be an experience I've also got some matching thread for uh, fabric which I had to pick up this morning because I'm pedantic about these things <laughs> I did have some thread that was similar but I wanted it matching just in case my stitching wasn't great and I've also bought a pack of buttons because I couldn't buy them singly um, you just need one button and you make a thread thread loop for the back fastening so the bit that comes it's it's in two pieces the back bodice bit um, and then you you have to finish it off with a little thread and button to keep it closed I think that's all I need to tell you oh on my last video I think it was the last one in this series um, I'm sure I showed you these I think I did but I didn't know what they were for um, there's an opening on this and it lifts up I'll link everything above so you can go back and watch it these that that little opening there that little button I don't know where you open it now where's the button gone oh there that's it I don't know if you can see this I don't want, don't want to drag it over yet um, there's a little, little flap that lifts up and then you put these cams in and it's just for your different stitches a lovely gentleman written in the comments on my last video to tell me what they were for and um, told me that he ran a Facebook group for these machines I believe they're called something else and it's um, I think he lives in Australia and they're called something else in Australia but they're the same they're exactly the same machine so I joined the Facebook group and I've been doing a bit of research on there and these these are just all your different types of stitches all decorative really um, I think there's a blind hem for a uh, lot of stitch in there which is that one but yeah we're going to be just using the straight stitch on this machine now again in the pattern it doesn't tell you how it wants you to finish the seams maybe that's something that vintage sewing, uh, sewing patterns did I don't know and they just left it to you how you wanted to finish them so of course we can uh, use pinking shears on our seams we can use an overcast stitch or a zigzag stitch to finish them but obviously I've got my overlocker so what I think I'm going to do is before I even start sewing this together I think I'm going to finish all the edges that are going to be seamed in the overlocker and then I can still uh, press those seams open so I'm not I'm not going to do the seam first and then finish in the overlocker I'm just going to overlock all the edges first on each pattern piece and then I'll be able to open them up and uh, give them a good press so I think that's what I'm going to do because yeah it doesn't it doesn't say I've not read it anywhere anyway unless I've skipped past it like I normally do um so yeah I'm going to do that I suppose you could do a French seam but yeah I don't really like doing French seams if I can help it so I'm just going to finish all my edges in the overlock so I've got to set up the overlock first and get that done so I will crack on with that now you don't really need to see that it's just 
me finishing the seams off in the elbow locker. But I'll film it and I'll just have to put it in. Right then, that's all the pattern pieces all um, overlocked the edges where I'm going to be seaming, seaming, sewing it together. You know what I mean. So we need to get Bertha up and running and ready. So I do need to sort my bobbin out if I can remember how to do it and sort my seam allowance out, which I'm going to do now. This is so heavy. <laughs> Right, I'm going to move the camera around to the back of me so you can see a bit better. Hopefully the sun doesn't um, glare into the camera. I'm hoping it doesn't. But yeah, I'm going to move the camera around anyway now so you can see what I'm doing. Right, so I've set all the machine up ready. I did th thought I was recording it when I set it up. I had a bit of a problem with the bobbin. Um, so there's not much bobbin thread, so I need to keep an eye on that. But yeah, we're all set, ready to go. I had to change the needle because for some reason there was a great big chunky needle in it. Um, I can't remember whether that was one I put in or whether it was an original, whatever the machine come with, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, we're all ready to go and get cracking. So the first thing on these instructions it wants you to do is to e-stitch along the sh shoulder edges. So let's get the... So it's on the bodice back, sorry. So let's get the bodice back. So this is the bodice back. I'm hoping the, the light's all right and picking it up. Um, so we have need to sew between, there's a triangle mark here and a notch that I've marked there. Um, I've finished off the overlocking. I don't know if I've just told you, I can't remember. So it wants us to ease stitch along those points. Now that seems a big seam allowance to me. So we need to up, uh, probably do a bit four and a half, up our stitch length. So I need to do from between the triangle and the notch. Where's the notch? Here. So I just need to keep an eye out for that notch in a sec. Um, left long tails as well because we need to pull it in a little bit if it doesn't fit I think. rocking my table a little bit right that's that's that oh leave some long tails and we need to do the same on the other side of it So now with E-stitch, it wants us to, let's move this back a little bit, oh my god, let's have a read of the instructions. Pin the bodice front and bodice back together at the shoulders, adjust the ease, baste and then stitch. I'm not going to bother basting, I don't want to worry about the baste. So this is the back, I'm going to put this on the front there's the front right sides together obviously you're probably going to see me make a ton of mistakes during this so I don't know why we have to ease stitch because it's perfect if it's perfect <laughs> why do we got to, why have we got to ease stitch what was the point in that what was the point in that? I don't understand that at all. But, oh, I, yeah. Maybe it's in case you... I don't know. I don't know if it's perfect. I don't understand that. Yeah. 
me that fits perfect so I'm just going to pin these in place all these marks as well it's I've done it with washable pen so of course it'll all wash out right let's bring Bertha back over a little bit oh gosh it's so heavy let's get these sewn this is more of just a sew with me than a um, tutorial. I, I can't show you how to make something when this is the first time I'm making it. It's just, I just thought I'd show you all what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And so you can laugh at me trying to use this machine. That's going to get in the way now, but oh well. Right. Um, what am I doing? I've come a bit too much forward, but we can go back. What's happening? Oh, okay, that's all. I do keep thinking this. Oh, hello, Binksy Cat. This machine's gonna. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it because I don't want it to happen. But you, you know what I mean. What happened nearly the first time I used it when I plugged it. I plugged it in and pressed the presser foot. Yeah. What's going on there? On my machine, it's here. There we go. That's that one done. I'll cut all these threads properly in a, in a minute. That's that one done. I keep doing that. So that's those together at the shoulder seams. Obviously they're not attached at the side seams yet, but I think we've got to do the darts next. Right, I've had to shut the curtains because the sun's come out now and it's making a horrible glare. So you're just gonna to have to put up with the ugly curtains, I'm afraid. So I've pinned my dart, um, made sure it's going through the lines, the pins are going through the lines on both sides so they're equal. I'm just going to stitch along this till I get to the end virtually, to the end here, and then I'm going to reduce my stitch length and sew a bit of a line and then go off. And it stops you getting pointy pointy darts that way I believe ow anyway and while I'm here I'm just going to make sure I thread not those threads so they don't come out I'm just going to go and give that a press now and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so we've done the back. Now we're going to do the darts on the front. Now these are a bit odd because you have to stretch one bit to fit apparently. Um, 
yeah so we're gonna see <laughs> don't know how that's gonna go it's kind of like a kit maybe it's like i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know right let's pin it up and see right it's later on in the day um i've sorted the kids out and that now so everything's a mess right so with the bodice i managed to do those weird dots on the front um they look okay i don't know what it's going to look like when it's actually on but they don't seem to be too bad um yeah we're just gonna have to wait and see when we come to put the skirt on how how it looks So that's the bodice bit done so far. So I'm just going to stick that to the side a minute. So now we need to do our facing. No, it didn't say to interface the facing pieces, so I'm not going to. Um, this is like a, a cotton poplin, I think it is. So it's it's quite sturdy. I don't think it needs interfacing on it. Maybe if I was using a drapier fabric. I would have interfaced it but um yeah i'm not going to bother because it doesn't tell me to so just going to put a couple of pins in these so we're just going to do uh five eighths seam allowance stitching across there and then once that's up that way i think in the pattern it does want you to turn this under a quarter of an inch all the way around and then stitch it down but it's too much faffing I'm just going to run it through the overlocker because that's how I'd normally finish off the edge of um, <laughs> the facing I'm getting tired now it's the end of the day I'm getting tired now Right, let me take my slippers off because I can't sew with my slippers. Back stitch. Let's move this lid up. going to back stitch over here because that's where it is on my machine so I keep um, going to do that there we go I've just finished off that edge the stitches aren't the best and um, skipping stitches for some reason maybe it's the needle I don't know I don't know but um yes so what it wants us to do now we need to move birth for a minute Jesus, I'm going to have massive muscles, keep moving this backwards and forwards. Right, that's the front, this is the back. Back, front. The longer bit goes at the back. So you've got this stitching line that I've marked here. And then what we're going to do, we're going to cut into that to make a, an opening so you can get your head in and out. Because at the minute you're never going to get your hit, head in and out that little hole. <laughs> So I'm going to try and pin this in place. I think this is how it wants you to do it. Matching up all those stitch lines and the notches and whatever else. So now we're going to sew around the neck. And then once we get to the stitching lines, we're actually going to sew on those lines. We're not going to sew away from them. On the seam allowance, we're going to actually sew on those lines. Right, that was a rigmarole and a half, wasn't it? So that is now attached, thank heavens. 
So what we need to do now is ignore that stitching line that I made that went all higgledy piggledy. I'm going to trim this down and then notch. I'm just going to like cut into the curve so it'll sit nice and flat and I'm going to get rid of all these. Where I went wrong. I'm not going to try and unpick them all because you're not going to see them anyway. Now I've done a proper stitching line. Yeah, so I'm just going to trim all that down and then cut into the notch, notch into the, the seam. And I won't go through, obviously, go through my seam line. And then I'm just going to um, cut straight right down to here, not too far down. I don't want to stop, uh, go through my stitches. But it's just so we can keep it in to make that opening. Now I'm going to... So I'm just going to understitch along this facing as best as I can and as far as I can. Obviously you're not going to be able to get into the corners where we've just made that neck opening. But just as long as you can, we go as far as we can, it'll be fine. You're not going to see this on the stitching anyway, it's the whole point of it. It's just to keep the stitching from rolling out. The facing, sorry. Right, it is the next day. I ran out of time yesterday. Um, by the time I picked the kids up and done the tea and then sorted the house out and whatnot, um, I've, I've done a bit of filming, you'll see it, you'd have already seen it, sorry. Um, I did a bit more. I wanted to get this finished around the neck. Um, so I've done that. I did have to stop filming because my phone's been playing up, so I'm hoping that it's going to stay recording this I think it's because it's something to do with the memory on my phone so I've tried to free up some space anyway so I'm hoping I'm hoping it works now right so what did I finish off yesterday what did I do off camera I I think I showed you the bit attaching the facing um, and I've got all that done and then I just understitched so it's, you just stitch actually on the facing and catch the um, the seam from underneath so I've done all that and then made sure it was all um, facing the wrong side and then give it all a good steamy press so it's all sitting really nice now well it was before I scrunched it all up on here so the next thing we need to do we needed to do and I think I've already done it yeah the sleeve facings you need to just pin and sew together you just sew that edge there I think from where I could gather. I think I've done that right. I need to double check. I think I've, yeah, I have done that right. I was having a brain fart then. So this curved ed edge here, um, it just wants you to um, sew that together and then that'll be your facing for one and do the same for the other one. And that'll be the facing for the other sleeve. Now again, it wants you to turn the outer edge which will be this edge. I want you to turn it quarter of an inch and then stitch it down. I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm going to run it through the overlocker because I'm a cheat. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to check what to do with this ed edge here because this is still open. I don't know what it wants you to do, whether it just wants you to leave it open like that and turn it like that maybe. I'm going to double check because I'm, I'm not sure. I still haven't woke up yet. I'm pretty sure I'm coming down with something. Um, I woke up today and I've done nothing but sneeze and my eyes are streaming. So I think I'm getting a cold. I don't feel snuff, stuffy yet, but I feel it all in my head. So I want to try and get... I don't think I'm going to get this finished today. I really don't. Um, as I say, I don't feel 100%. So this will probably be part one of the video and then I might finish... Do all the finishing pieces, like hemming and maybe putting a zip in. 
um, in a part two. We'll see how we feel. But I think I think it's going to be a two part of video, if I'm honest. Right. So I'm going to move the camera back around to behind me. This obviously isn't a tutorial because I'm kind of, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm not, this no way is a tutorial. It's more of like a sew it together with me and see me making mistakes <laughs> and struggling on this machine. Um, to be honest, there's nothing wrong with the machine. I think it's me, user error. Um, I'm just obviously getting used to the machine. I probably should have made something a bit less daunting on it first but anyway I'm going to move you around so you can see what I'm doing hopefully it's not too sunny today it's nice blue skies but it's not too sunny so I'm hoping that you don't get a massive glare off the camera again if you do I'm gonna to have to shut the curtains right I'll move you around and let's get cracking right hopefully I'm not gonna sit in front of the camera like I kept doing yesterday after looking back at the video I'm sitting right in front of the camera, my big head's in the way. Right, so I've just finished off those edges. Not very well, my seams, um, it keeps sticky, skipping stitches, can't get my words out. I'm going to have to have a look at that overlocker, I don't know whether it's the needle, it might be the, might be the wrong needles or something, I can't remember what needles are in there, but it'll do, it's fine. So I've just finished those edges on the um, sleeve facing, so I'm going to put those to one side a minute because we're going to need them in a sec. Um, we need to sew up the underarm seams first. So I've already pinned that ready to go. Now you just want to make sure that that waistline's together. Because I know from watching videos a lot of people didn't do this bust start on the front um, properly. And I thought I'd not done it properly but when I've um, matched up the side seams it does sit properly so I know I've done it right I didn't think I had but I, uh, I have so I think people are getting stuck on this bust dart and then having problems with the waist seam when it comes to fitting the skirt so I know I, well I think I've done it right so yeah you can sew all down the one side of the right side but on the left side we need to leave a space for the zipper so I've put a pin in where I need to stop I'm just going to put a pin in here just to make sure I'm just going to do it to keep it together where's my pins gone I'll have to use one of these I don't know where I've put my pins the other pins oh they're over on the uh, on the ironing board behind me so I'm just going to put that there just to stop it from flapping about so on this one we're just going to sew from the edge to that pin there and there is a, um, I have marked where I need to stop. I've took that, you saw me take it off yesterday, I've took the seam guide off because it was just too bulky it was getting in the way and I've just stuck a piece of sellotape. It's not the most visible sellotape but it'll have to do. We've still got enough bobbin in there, just check all my stitches haven't moved. Yeah, that's fine. backstitch this quite a few times because there we go I don't want it coming undone I'm just going to do this side as well
right so I'm going to trim trim down this seam allowance you can you can probably grade it but I'm not going to bother I'm just going to trim it down just make sure you don't go through your stitching line I'm trimming it down to probably about quarter of an inch ish it's only a grade estimate maybe Some people, when they do the understitching, they like to iron first. I don't. I like to stretch the seams apart, understitch, and then press. Um, I just think it gives a better finish, but you do you. Whatever, whichever way you prefer. Um, I'm going to leave that light off a little bit, actually, because the sunlight's bright enough. So, flip this over. Oh, it's looking nice. Right, that's our underarm. We make sure that the seam allowance is on the left so that we're stitching it together. This is going to be a bit difficult because I've got to fit everything underneath without it puckering. So you stitch onto the facing, not on your dress, and you make sure you catch that seam underneath. That's what understitching is. I know that one. I know that one. <laughs> and again, I'm not going to bother folding back, um, back stitching because I'll, I'm going around in a circle, so I'll catch those last, those first stitches when I finish. You just want to sew right along this edge, probably like an eighth of a way, eighth of an inch of a way away from that stitch line. I'm just pulling that seam apart so it gets it's nice and taut. There we go. Lovely jubbly. Oh. I'm going to cut our thread. Now we just need to have a look at the instructions to see whether it wants us to tack these, this facing down like we did um, on the neckline. We tacked it to the, the shoulder seams so it doesn't keep coming out and flapping about. If it doesn't say to do anything that's probably what I'm going to do just to stop it from coming out but I'm going to give these a good press. In a minute, stop seeing like that one's fall, falling out already. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna read the instructions, see what it wants us to do about these, this facing, and give these a good press. Okay, so I've now pressed the facing on the inside, so the inside of the bodice. Now it says it wants you, it just said on the instructions to stitch the outer edge of the facing down. So I'm guessing that it wants you to, do, I don't know, follow the, because really that should be turned over a quarter of an inch like we're supposed to, we were supposed to do. So maybe it just wanted you to stitch on that edge there. But I don't think, I'm, I don't know whether I'm going to like a big stitching line around it. I, I don't know how I feel about that. So... What I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to put, I'm going to stitch in the ditch here so you won't see the stitching hopefully if I do it right. Um, just to catch that inside edge and hold it down to stop it flapping out. And I might do it, might do it for this inside edge here, maybe. I'm just going to do it for this bit now, for now. And then when I put it on, if I feel like this is, keeps flapping out. I can just run a stitch to stitch it all the way down um, but for now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do like a I'm just gonna like tack it kind of thing because yeah I don't know how it will look once it's done 
the thread that I've chosen is virtually identical to the blue so it might look all right but we'll just do this for now because I'm not I'm not a hundred percent Just forwards and back just to tack it in place for now. That'll do. And that one. Just stop it falling out so much. It might still fall out, we'll see. Yeah, you can't really see those stitches on there. I've done that one quite well. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> that should stop it from moving too much. We'll see. We shall see. Where are we? Right, let's do the same to the other. So there we go. We've got our bodice together and ready to go. I'm hoping that fits me. It doesn't look the biggest. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't look very big, but it's my sizes and I've done all the measurements right. See, I'm getting it flapping about, so maybe I'm going to have to put a stitch down there. We'll see. We'll see how it, how it goes when I when I put it on. Right, let's see what we've got to do next. Well, I think it's the skirt next. Right, so we've got our skirt piece and I can't remember which is which, what's the front and what's the back, but it shouldn't matter because we've marked... Uh, down the side where um, one of the sides anyway where we need to leave it open for the zip so so she says move that one out by a minute yeah I can't actually remember which is the front and the back but it'll match up to the, the bodice in a bit because we've left that opening on the bodice haven't we so Yep. Oh, there we go. So I think that one's the back. And we've got our marking here uh, where we need to start sewing from. Because we need to leave that bit open ready for the zip to go in. Because the zip obviously goes down the, the side of the, the bodice and into the, the skirt. This is going to make a really nice uh, twirly dress. I'm going to be twirling around in this when I'm wearing it. <laughs> right, where's the... There it is. So right sides together, I'm going to pin and make sure I match up those markings. Because that's where we need to start on this side. Okay, so let's sew down them. Oh my god! Let's sew down them side seams. So don't forget, on this side we're going to sew from where are we? So from this marking here, and we're going to backstitch a few times as well because oh, that's going to come out. Yeah, we're going to go over and do that back stitch quite a few times because um, when we're putting the zip in, we might be messing with that quite a lot and then we don't want it to come out. I'm just going to make sure that's in there. Stitch 
lovely jubbly. Okay, so we've got the skirt sorted. That's on nicely. Now I might put the dress onto the skirt. We've got time, let's put the dress on the skirt, on the bodice I mean. The skirt on the bodice, gosh. On the outside lap, lap under edge of skirt, over the body, matching the centres, placing basted edge along the seam line, stitch close to basted edge. That's, um, I don't know whether that's how they did it years ago, but that's too much faff. I'm not funnying around doing that. I'm just going to do it the way I know how to do it. I really did want to try and stick to the pattern as much as I could on this, but there's a lot of, <coughs> excuse me, there's a lot of faffing about. So let's get our bodies. Make sure we've got the sides. So what I'm going to do, obviously this is the right side out, I'm going to put it on the inside of the skirt. You could do it the other way around and put it on the, like flip this over and turn this the other way around. But it should work this way, just because it's already this way. So these are vintage techniques, yeah, I'm not being very authentic, am I? But did I mark the centre? I thought I marked the centre, I didn't. We have got pattern, we've got notches here that we can match up, which is a bonus. I appreciate that. And I have marked them out very well, so. Because there's nothing worse than coming to stitch a garment together and you've not done all your notches or all your markings and you're like, oh, what am I doing? Right. So this edge, I'm just going to clip off that overhang layer. it's in the way that's all there we go so that should line up like that as long as we pull it a little bit there we go fan dabby dozy there is a little bit of I think it might be where the fabric's just pulled out of shape a little bit as I've been sewing but it's fine we can stretch that into place when we come to sew. Let's see where we can uh, hold that together. That's all pinned around the waist and I've matched all the notches and all the markings and it's gone in beautifully. Right, so I'm just going to run this through the machine, five eighths of an inch away from the seam. The camera cut off because my storage is low, so I'm just going to do that and then I'm going to finish this waist seam off in the overlock to stop any frame. So I'm just going to do that now, so if it goes off, the camera goes off at least, you know why. I'll be back when I've done this to show you what it's looking like. Okay, so here she is hanging up. She doesn't look <laughs> she doesn't look very good at the minute. Um, that's not the best coat hanger for her. And I don't have a mannequin. I'd love a mannequin. Um, I will get one eventually. So I still need to... Where are we? I still need to put in the zipper in that edge. Um, I am going to... I am going to do a line of stitching around here because this facing... Even though I've tacked it at the top, it still keeps popping out so I'll do that I have tried it on and it is it 
it's like a bit weird here, like baggy, but I need to put the shoulder pads in that I've completely forgot about. So I'm hoping that they'll lift this area a little bit, hoping. But it's still wearable, it's fine. And we need to put the button um, loop thing on the back to keep that closed and together. And then we need to hem it. So I'm just gonna let it hang uh, for at least 24 hours in case the material drops, the fabric drops. I don't think it will. Um, but we're almost there, so I'm going to have to go because the storage is playing up on my phone. Um, so yes, I will see you all in the next video.